Denver Center for the Performing Arts Off Center and the Museum of Contemporary Art Denver present Mixed Taste, Tag Team Lectures on Unrelated Topics. And now, introducing tonight's unlikely pairing, Casa Bonita and Social Robots. Please welcome tonight's hosts, Sarah Bai and Charlie Miller. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the last mixed taste of the summer. I'm Charlie Miller, yes. I'm the curator of Off Center here at the DCPA. And I'm Sarah Bai. I am the director of programming at the Museum of Contemporary Art. And it is our pleasure to welcome you here to Mixed Taste tonight. If you are here in the ballroom watching it from this very space, we have the bar open all night long. There is a drink special tonight. It is called a Benita Bot. A Benita Bot. It looks like you might already be drinking a Benita Bot. Very good. Take I'm on a margarita. Oh. A little spicy. I think you'll like it. All right. Um, so if you're here in the ballroom or joining us live online, we have a second screen experience so that you can all participate in Mixed Taste at the same time. Scan the QR code you see on your screen, tap on the little pop-up to get to the website. There are three tabs. Uh, one, you can participate in the ideas chat if you want to have a running commentary through the show. We're going to do some polls, and you can submit your questions for the Q&A later in the evening. So we're going to do a quick poll to try it out. And our poll tonight is how many times have you, personally, been to Casa Bonita? So is that zero times, never been there? Have you been there well, two to one time? Have you been there two to four times? Have you been there, let's see, five to nine times? Or ten wow. or more times? Ten or more times? I, <laughs> That is impressive. That is impressive. All right, let's see. It looks like 32% of you, that's a third, because um, I'm good at math, good, good uh, math. Uh, have never been to Casa Benito. Well, you're in for a treat tonight. And also, those, uh, those of you who have been two to four times, which is the second most popular answer, are also in a treat. All right, I think you got the hang of the polls. And now let's uh, switch over to the ideas chat. And um, the question for you to answer right now is, uh, what's a game you'd like to play with a social robot? So type in the answer. We'll see your answers as they come in here. And again, this is a space during the show if you want to comment or connect with Twister, other people. Twister, Clue, Twister. Clue. Twister uh, with a robot. I would yeah. like to see that. Charades. I bet, I bet this robot could play charades. Yeah, it might be able to. I was just going to try to send it to parties for me. <laughs> On Sit my behalf. At the bar. Yeah. Um, all right, so you get the hang of it. We're going to get started here tonight. For those who are new or don't know what you're getting into, Mixed Taste is a mashup series where we bring together two experts to speak on totally unrelated topics. And then we have a live question and answer session on both topics at the same time. The rules are very simple. The first speaker speaks for 20 minutes, then the second speaker speaks for 20 minutes. During the first part of the program, we allow no, quest or no connections between the topics, but during the Q&A, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Between the talks, we'll play a quick game. I'm excited for this one, although I usually am excited for the game. <laughs> you uh, and we'll have a, a local poet join us at the end of the night to create an original poem inspired by what we learn. So it is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker tonight, who will be speaking on Casa Benita. Andrew Novick was born here in Denver. We've had him his whole life. And he has deep connections to the, the city's history, its vibrancy. He's an avid pop culture and experiential photographer. And he's created several experimental events and installations, including work in the upcoming Meow Wolf, which you may have heard of. He's also an electrical engineer by day. He measures atomic clocks and atomic time. He's an avid collector as well. And he has been to Casa Bonita over... 300 times. So if ever there was an expert, please welcome Andrew Novick. Thanks everybody for coming. This is awesome. I heard this is the, the top selling mixed taste of the season. So yes, thank you so much. Um, and, uh, yeah, I didn't vote in that poll, but as she said, I've been there over 300 times, so count me as 10 or more. I could, vo I could vote 10 or more 30 times. Like, does that trump up the numbers a little? Um, 
All right. Well, uh, for a lot of you who have not been to Casa Bonita, this may sound confusing and awesome, and hopefully you will be a fan of it by the time the talk is over. Uh, they build themselves as the world's most exciting restaurant. And um, I just talked to somebody yesterday who, who had taken their kids to Casa Bonita and subsequently taken their kids to Disneyland. And at Disneyland, in the midst of Disney, they're like, this is just like Casa Bonita. So I was like, yes. So, um, and, and, and it has been coined, I don't know officially or not, of, um, but the, the Disneyland of Mexican restaurants. Uh, so it, it opened in 1974, and there were actually a couple other Casa Bonitas uh, at the time, but this is in Lakewood, Colorado on West Colfax, and uh, West Colfax is a whole other awesome topic. Maybe some future mixed tastes we can talk about <laughs> Colfax. Um, but uh, it was, it's in this JCRS center, um, and uh, I don't, this is probably the opening day, I'm not sure exactly what the opening day was, but... Uh, uh, it was known to have a line like down the down the block on this in this strip mall um, that it was in, and it used to be a Joslin's um, department store, and uh, so you know you have this department store with all these different levels, and they really they they created a whole environment in there. Um, we'll see some pictures of it. Uh, so this this guy is Bill Waugh. He was the inventor of Casa Bonita, and um, you can see in this ad. Um, uh, there's coupons for Casa Bonita, Taco Bueno, and Crystals. And the reason I want to point that out is because so Taco Bueno was a pretty well-known chain at the time. Um, not super theme, it was just like a fast food, but it, it was like a, kind of an adobe-looking restaurant. Um, it, but then Crystals was one of my uh, other favorite restaurants growing up. It was on Havana, uh, and it was pizza and... A uh, movie theater, multiple levels, and you could like take your pizza, you have your birthday party, and you run into the theater, and you run and play video games, you just take your pizza wherever you go. So um, I didn't find out till much more recently that, that Bill Waugh, the inventor of my favorite Casa Bonita, was also the inventor of my other favorite restaurant. So <laughs> let's call Bill a genius. Uh, so Ricardo Montalban, you might recognize from Fantasy Island. Uh, you're dating yourselves, by the way. <laughs> Anyone who like cheered for that uh, dated themselves, but um, he was a spokesman for uh, Taco Bueno, and uh, so they actually got him to do a commercial for Casa Bonita, and that commercial has never been found since. Like it's one of the things I'm just like I gotta find this. Like where you know like uh, so if anyone comes across that, let me know because that would be amazing. And another interesting thing um, about Ricardo Montalban. So at Casa Bonita they have this candy money, and they give it out to kids. Uh, and then uh, on your way out, there's a tr the treasure room, and you exchange your candy money for uh, candy, like Tootsie Rolls or something. And um, the original candy money uh, had, uh, like, as the, 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 the face, like the George Washington face on the money, was like a stereotypical Mexican person. And, uh, you know, right when they opened. And Ricardo Montalban... Um, actually called them out on that back, you know, back in 75 or wherever and said like, he's like, this isn't really what you want to have representing your restaurant. And so they changed it and it, it, you can find it online, but it really has never been used since, which is awesome. So yeah, way to go, Ricardo. <laughs> Social justice uh, in the 70s. Um, and, and they changed it to Bananas, who we'll, we'll talk about a little bit, but that's one of, that's one of their mascot characters. So here's some pictures of just uh, Casa Bonita of yesteryear. Um, they had really cool outfits. Um, they, uh, they've changed their outfits throughout time. I don't think they have uniforms now. Um, but a friend, uh, Mary Beth, who worked at Casa Bonita in the 80s, I believe, or the early 90s, um, still has her outfit. And so she's actually come to some events like wearing her Casa Bonita and her name tag, which is awesome. Um, so if you don't know about Casa Bonita, one of the, one of the great features is a, a three-story waterfall inside. So when you come in and you get your food and you come around the corner and there's this giant waterfall and there's palm trees, it's beautiful. And um, you can't even believe you're, you're inside. Because, and the ceiling is black, I mean, and there's, there's music and there's like, you know, humid air and you're just like, wow, we're, we're back outside somehow in, in Acapulco. Um, and so you, it really is, you, it is really is transformative and cool. And that's what, you know, before, before immersive entertainment was a, a, a phrase, 
Um, Casa Bonita has been doing it for uh, over 40 years. Here's another view of the waterfall, as you can see, and there's these cliff divers. Uh, and they, they jump off of all, they climb up the rocks and they jump off of all different levels. Um, and uh, the pool is 14 feet deep in the center because to, to dive from like 35 or 42 feet, whatever, if they climb all the way to the very top, um, it has to be deep enough for them to, to dive in and they have to aim for that center part of the bowl there. It's, it's amazing. And so here's the view. So you can see here there's people on a bridge um, looking through the waterfall. So here's the view from the other side. And it's just incredible. Like you look out and it's like, it's like this whole city. Um, and it's just so amazing to, to walk around. And, and like anyone who grew up here probably maybe had a birthday party there or multiple birthday parties there. Um, some people go there every year for their birthdays. So <laughs> um, it really is a cool, a cool place. Um, and some of the features, uh, so there's a talking rock. Um, it actually is like, it's kind of facing in and like when the puppet show is about to start, it turns around and reveals a face and it talks, um, kind of welcomes you to the puppet show plaza. And um, there's bananas, one of the iterations of the bananas character, um, the costume is orange monkey. Um, and then the puppet show. Um, and then there's, there's all these different themed areas. So it's not all outside. There's, there's um, a gold mine, a silver mine, um, the stalactite caves. Uh, so it really is like all these different kinds of in environments. Um, so then you, you see up there um, well, who I call the dead miner. So if you're, in the, if you're walking around in the silver mine, um, and I was like, do you, got, do you know there's this dead miner in here? And he's like sitting there and like, um, they call him the sleeping miner. I call him the dead miner. And people are like, no, he's sleeping. And you can hear a sound of snoring that's just repeating. And I'm like, they're like, you can hear him snoring. I was like, that's obviously recording. He's dead. And they, they're just, they put this recording to make you think he's sleeping. So, um, and then inside Black Bart's cave, which is a whole nother, this kind of haunted cave with monsters and characters in it. Um, kids love it. Like you, they go in and like don't come out for half an hour. Um, but inside the cave, my favorite feature in there is you walk through and you actually walk into the dragon's mouth and you go through his body and there's like a heart and it used to be this like beating, glowing heart, which is amazing. Um, and you kind of come out the other side, it's kind of towards the end. But whenever I take people there, I always get a picture of whoever I'm with inside Black, the mouth of the dragon in Black Bart's cave. So I have hundreds of pictures of people um, in Black Bart's cave. And then... There's, there's even people who, because I, start, uh, I started doing tours there, not um, the official tours, just my own tour, <laughs> because like, people knew that I had, uh, had been there a bunch of times, and it was with the Denver Modernism Festival or, or uh, convention, and so we all went, and they're like, hey, take us on a tour, and I'm like, okay, I guess, you know, I know some stuff, so I just took people around on a tour and just started making up stuff, like, about everything. Um, <laughs> And so, but then as I've learned actual facts, I um, put, integrate those into my tour sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes people will point out stuff on the tour I never even noticed, which is amazing. So then that gets integrated into the, into the tour, which is incredible. Um, but this, there's a matador, a pink matador outfit, and it's in this corner, the top farthest corner from the kitchen. It's actually a quarter mile from the kitchen. Just to give you an idea of the scope of this. And if you were a server there, it's like, they, you know, so so the, at your table, there's a, there's a flag, and you raise the flag if you want um, something else. There's several all-you-can-eat all you options. So you're like, you raise the flag, and then the server comes, and you're like, uh, I want more sopapillas and more tacos. And so they have to go back a quarter mile to the kitchen, get your stuff, and then come back. And so, so a lot of people don't even know this room is, is there, because it's, like, it's in the farthest corner. But it's a really cool room with the matador, and there's bullfighter posters, and some paintings. Um, really cool. Um, and every room is different. I mean, it's, it's, it's a unique experience no matter where you sit. And so out front, there's this hand-painted sign that's just beautiful. I love it. There's actually two of them. And it talks about some of the features. Um, so there's the magician, cliff divers, puppet show, um, gunfights, um, strolling musicians. So they have the, a mariachi band that oftentimes, and they walk around, they play live. And, um, if you tell them it's your birthday, they'll come to your table and sing. And <laughs> I have a trick that I do sometimes for people when the, if the mariachis come by. Um, I request the Macarena. 
because they play like a six-minute version of the Macarena. It's like so embarrassing for whoever, whoever's like birthday is. They're like, oh my God, how many more verses are they going to do of this? It's really, it's really funny. Um, and then uh, funny, like my idea of funny is kind of a, a prank sense, I guess. Um, and then in the lower right, it says dancing monkeys. Um, and then, but it actually says prancing, dancing monkeys in costume. And so I always like, that's like a quizzical one, because if it's monkeys in costume, because I know there's people in monkey costume, there's a monkey costume, and there's actually a gorilla costume. But if it's monkeys in costume, like, did I even see them? If they, were they in a human costume? So I was like, dancing, prancing monkeys in costume. And then it says, splendid appointments, which I'm not exactly sure what that means in this context, but, but I love it. It's splendid. I have a splendid appointment this afternoon for my birthday at Casa Bonita. And it also says at the bottom, um, 300 smiling faces to serve you. Um, and they, they often have, um, during their busy season, they have uh, upwards of 400 employees, um, not all at the same time, but to run the, the lunch and dinner there. It's, it's a very, um, very busy place. It seats over 1,000 people. It's 52,000 square feet. Um, and uh, yeah, you could just spend hours in there. And so you go in, um, and so I, you notice we've been talking for now 12 minutes. I have not mentioned the food yet. <laughs> and that's because uh, a lot of people complained about the food. Everyone's like, oh, the food's awful. It made me sick. Ah, the food sucks. Ah, you know, and it's like, I've eaten there over 300 times. Like, I kind of like the food, like, especially the chili reno plate. They actually roll their own chili rianos, a deep-fried, crispy chili rianos. But, but a lot of people hate the food, or they had a bad experience, and that just carries on with them forever. Like, even if, if the food was improved, they might still have that in their, in their memory. Um, but uh, it's clearly a, a restaurant that's been around for 47 years, uh, and everyone complains about the food. It's clearly not about the food. So just like forget about like people tell you if you've never been and people are like, oh, eat before you go. Like it's awful. You know, it's like just don't listen to the haters. I actually say like skip lunch and go for dinner. Like the hungrier you are, the less you'll be worried about the food. <laughs> and it, it is interesting that the food comes through like a slot in the wall, which is <laughs> that's probably not good for the, the haters there. Um, and so you order, and you go through this kind of turnstile, kind of themed turnstile thing um, of path, just much like Disneyland. Um, and then you get to the front with your tray, and you pick up your food. Um, and then uh, here's people having drinks. So they have at the bottom there's the chocolate bandito. That's my favorite thing. It's like a chocolate kind of milkshake, icy kind of thing. Then they have the strawberry senorita, which is a strawberry version of that. Um, they have the Casa Rita, which is the, uh, mar the, their version of the margarita. Um, so here, once you get your food, um, and you're on, this, you're on this kind of runway with your tray, and you're ready to like take off. And um, so I often try to take a picture of my, the group I'm with at this, in this takeoff zone area. And so for people who've never been there, they still don't know, they don't know there's a waterfall, they don't know all this stuff, it's like a, it's like a, a new thing. But then here's the Sopa Pia. So even people who who complain about the food, love the sopapillas. Like, they, they have their own high-altitude recipe they've perfected. Um, they use local honey from Boulder, um, and they're just, it's a, unique, it's a unique thing. I mean, it's just, it's a simple thing to make, but theirs are very unique um, in and of themselves. And so, um, in 2003, so South Park, the guys who did South Park are from here. Um, they went to school in Boulder. I was actually in Boulder at the same time as them. And uh, they, so they knew Casa Bonita well from growing up and going there. So they featured it on South Park. And like, it actually added a resurgence to, to Casa Bonita's popularity. Um, and every time the, the, the particular episode re-airs, um, the employees can tell, like, oh, they must have showed that South Park again. Because it's, <laughs> it's actually, they have to staff up for it. Because people are like, oh, yeah, that's right, Casa Bonita. Um, so I, I love taking people there who it's their first time. So if anyone wants to go, once it reopens, we'll talk about that later, uh, let me know. Because it's, it's so fun to go with people, as much as I'm like bright-eyed and like interested, um, when people go for the first time, it's just really cool. And I've taken people there. This is some kids I met from Kazakhstan, and I took them there. <laughs> I've taken people from Japan, Germany, China. 
Um, uh, actually, I took some people from Mexico. I was a little worried because it's like uh, not the best Mexican food. Like you know, like even I, even I was shy about talking about the food when I took people from Mexico there. But they actually liked it. They're like, this is very interesting, and like you know, it's like. They, they were into it. Oh, they, and this also shows the flag, too, that you raise. So um, uh, at, the, at the MCA, there's this teen failure lab, and it's such a cool program. And um, teens go and they think of you know, cool projects to do. And so they, the project they came up with, they want to break, a world, break or set a world record. So they brought me in to kind of uh, mentor the kids. And I, I, I swear I wasn't trying to steer it towards Casa Bonita, but... <laughs> It did end up being, we wanted to make the world's largest Sopapilla sculpture of Casa Bonita. <laughs> and we did it! I think there's like 700 Sopapillas there. So I'm in the meeting and I'm texting one of the managers that I know. I was like, how many Sopapillas can you make in a day? Or whatever. He's, like, he's like, we can make 6,000 in a day. I was like, I need like 1,000. He's like, okay, come by at the end of the night and we'll get, we'll get you a bunch. Here's a detailed shot. They actually made this... Um, Kohata Hamek uh, statue on the top, and then there's a fountain out front that's beautiful. Um, <laughs> that they made out of... No, the, the fountain's beautiful. This one, I don't know, looks kind of like a blob, but... Um, and, and, and the other rule that we came up with is you had to... The only mortar that you could use to stick the sopapillas together was honey, of course. So it was a huge mess. That's why we were wearing the coveralls. So the gorilla's name is Chiquita, and there's like a gorilla show, and like he, they try to chase him around the restaurant. But I've actually got to wear the Chiquita outfit twice, so this is actually me as Chiquita. <laughs> there was a band called Spells that was doing a music video, and we all had to show up at Casa Bonita at like 7 in the morning <laughs> and, and act like we were dancing like in front of the waterfall. And, and they came out like, does anyone want the gorilla wear the gorilla costume? I was like, oh my god, me, 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 me. <laughs> So, this, so my swim trunks but as the gorilla. Um, and then um, next gallery who uh, moved from, north, um, from the uh, low high area in northwest Denver moved to West Colfax. They're a half a block from Casa Bonita. So when they moved, they, uh, this woman, um, Betsy Rudolph, Dalla B, um, came up with this idea to do a Casa Bonita themed art show as like an open call. And so... Um, they brought me in to help jury the show, and it was incredible. Like every year, we've done it for four years, and every year we've gotten over 50, like over 60 or more su submissions, and we picked like over 50 pieces, um, which is incredible. And, um, and so in the middle there was the winner from this last year, and it's like in a cave, and a woman's looking like she's serving food to her family, including a gorilla just sitting there eating. Um, <laughs> And then this was a TV that represented Black Bart's Cave that uh, my partner Mariah made. Um, and it showed videos from like um, everything from that Spells music video to like old Casabonita training videos that I've smuggled out. <laughs> so in 2019, I had my 300th visit. And so I replicated that same poster, but I actually had, I brought in mermaids to swim in the pond. Um, I brought in a mentalist magician, Miss Clairvoyant. Um, <laughs> And so I, I just I altered the poster slightly um, to fit fit my event, um, and I made some merch for the event. I had stickers. Um, I had a whole scavenger hunt. Um, so yeah, if you came, you got this bumper sticker. I I saw Andrew's 300th visit. I made enamel pins. Um, so yeah, it's, it was incredible. They used to have these diver pens in the gift shop, and they had discontinued them, I think, in the 90s. But I actually went to the manufacturer and had them redone. I actually, I made my, I took my own photographs. Um, so bringing up to present, present um, in uh, 2020 with the pandemic, like every restaurant, Casa Benita closed for a little while. Um, and then uh, they uh, hadn't reopened and it looked like they were in trouble with a, a weird lease and landlord trying to kick them out. They filed for bankruptcy. Um, so we put together this group called Save Casa Bonita, um, not just to like raise money for Casa Bonita, but to actually um, get attention and press and actually um, try to acquire it and bring it to local ownership. It's always been owned by outside of Colorado restaurant groups. And it doesn't need to be part of a restaurant group, it should be part of its own, it should just be its own um, ownership. So you can go to savecasabedina.org. We raised $68,000 so far. And we actually bought some of the debt from some of the small vendors in the bankruptcy. 
including the mariachi band and some local Latino food vendors that had not been paid for over a year. Yeah, give it up for the, the poor vendors who had not been paid. And we also retained counsel, um, a bankruptcy lawyer, so we've actually been following the bankruptcy. And um, because of this campaign, we've had investors and mergers experts and acquisition experts, and um, we really are vying to, to buy Cosmonita, and I think we're, we're pretty close, let's say that. Can't say too much, but I feel like we're doing really well. Um, and we had a rally outside um, for our fundraiser, and I, I wore, um, for my 300th visit, a friend actually made a new Bananas costume. <laughs> so Bananas 2019 came. Um, and we were on all sorts of, if you go to our website, there's tons of press on there. We've been on like tons of TV and media. So just as we're like thinking we're getting really close to this acquisition, then Matt, uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker just announced randomly to a reporter that they're going to buy Casa Bonita. They've never talked to the ownership. They don't have an offer. They don't have a plan. They just pronounced it. They proclaimed it. So that, could, that kind of derailed us a little, but we're, we're hopeful um, that we're going to do it. And um, uh, some uh, uh, a local kid did a petition saying, like, Cosmonita, you got to go. We want Matt and Trey to run it. So, like, that didn't help either. They got, like, they, they're up to, like, 5,000 signatures. That's totally meaningless. I don't know if a petition that's ever got an, a business to decide to sell or whatever. I mean, it's, it's there again, it kind of derails us. Um, but I really appreciate your attention today. And... Uh, um, you can go to savecosabedita.org. My website is isaveeverything.com. Um, you can look me up, find me on Facebook. Instagram is Ange Novik. Um, I do a lot of fun experiential things in town. Um, I have uh, some artwork, as Sarah said, in the new Meow Wolf. Um, I'm working with History Colorado Center right now on uh, what we're calling a puzzle quest. It's like a scavenger hunt where you solve puzzles and you get to learn all sorts of things about Denver history. Um, so I really, I like presenting things and creating things for people to do and experience. So thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. And now... It's halftime. Take a quick break if you need it to grab another Bonita bot at the bar at the back of the room. Uh, we're going to play a game between our talks today. So we invite you to play along on your second screen, your, your handheld device. And uh, back by, we're going to pull up the QR code in case you need it. Back by popular demand from the first week of Mixed Taste this year, we are going to play a little game. This is another of your favorite games, mine too. Uh, this one game. is called Quite a Racket. All right. And we're going to invite our poets tonight to join us and to play quite a racket with us. So James Brunt, please join us on stage. And Charlie's going to explain how quite a racket Welcome, works. Welcome, James. So, uh, thank you. So uh, I'm going to hold this while I explain. Oh, no. Here's how it works. We have a series of objects that you are going to use in place of a ping pong paddle or racket. We're going to play a quick tournament to figure out the winning object. Now, the first week that we did this game, I just chose random stuff from my house with the help of my kids. This week, we wanted to commemorate the season by choosing topics related to, uh, by choosing objects related to our topics. So, here we go. From the first week, Rage Philanthropy and Apples, we have an apple. From the second week, which was uh, Dr. Justina Ford and the banjo, we have a banjo. A banjo. Pay attention, because you're going to need to vote on the ones that you want to watch Sarah and James play. From the third week, Alien Communication and Shoddy Fabric, we have... This is a blanket made out of shoddy, which might make a good racket. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> From the fourth week, Forest Health and Lowriders, we have a tree representing a forest. I chopped this out of my alley this morning. Uh, from the fourth week, which was public transportation... No, yes. That was the fifth week. That's public needed. transportation and polyamory, we have... Uh, a bus. Yeah, we're out here. A model of a bus. <laughs> and from this week, in honor of Casa Bonita, we have some soap of P.S. <laughs> and then, of course, for a seventh, we have our gong that we use at Q&A time. So please go into your poll right now on your second screen. Choose, rank the items that you want, and we're going to play a quick tournament of <laughs> ping pong. Let's bring up the results. 
right, and see let's, what let's we see have what here. We got, so. Yeah, pick, pick something good. This is going to be rough. I mean, it's all good, James. It's all good. Uh, all right, so we got Sopapia, Banjo, Tree, and the Gong. <laughs> Excellent right. choices. I think we will start with a musical instrument round. So, James, do you want gong or banjo? I, I'll take the gong. Okay. I'll take, I'll take Great. it. Great. Sarah, you're on banjo. We'll, so here's right. how it's going to work. We'll see what we can We're do. We're going to do see. banjo versus gong. We're going to play one practice round so you can get used to your rackets. <laughs> are you, are and you then ready? we're going to play one point to determine the winner. Here I'm you go, cheap. James. This is, that's what's going to happen. All right, gonna this is the practice round. We're going to get some nice acoustics here. My mom hopefully. was like, why are you taking that banjo to work today? <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right here we go. Practice, go ahead. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Great. Already, all right, I'm ready now. I'm this ready. is the point to determine the winner between the banjo and the gong. All right. We've got James and Sarah here. All right. Queuing up. <laughs> oh. oh! Good, okay. good acoustics right. there. That point goes to James, okay. and the gong is the winner of that round. All right. James, would you like the sopapilla or the tree? I'll take, uh, I'll take the tree. Okay, so <laughs> you get a sopapilla. <laughs> Just don't take, take the out yeah, the lectern, I'll take, I'll take all right? The Shake that off because there's a lot of cinnamon sugar on it. Take the tree. Of course you're taking the tree. How are you going to hit with that? All right. <laughs> Nobody plays ping pong with the sopapilla. This is the practice round. All right, practice round. Sopapilla versus tree. Who do you right. think? Here we go. All right. Bring it. I practiced my whole life with this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. oh, no. Okay. Here, this is for, for points. I think you're going to have to serve it, yeah. Sarah. Uh, you can leave that branch behind. You don't have to play with the whole tree. I, this branch might help me. It might, <laughs> it might help my life. All right, Let's here we see. go. Okay, here we go. This is for the real point. Oh! Oh! James, that was way better than I'm I thought it would be. That was excellent. Okay, so now we've got Sopapia versus Gong for the win. <laughs> All right. Here's your practice round. You got a ball. I'm ready. Oh, I have a ball. Yes. All right. All right. So, Gong time. It's easy. Here we go. Olympics? Did y'all watch the Olympics? This is, this is not it. This is not it. No, we out here. Okay. Okay, that was the, that was the practice. practice. Sarah, you can serve. All right, this is the point to determine the winner. So Papia Gong, no who's pressure. gonna win? All right, very nervous. Oh, we'll, we'll let him keep going. Oh. Hey, Mr. James Brown and the Gong are the winners of the night. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you thank so Thank you for playing. Oh, oh, yes. We look forward so to hearing good. your poem good. after so, the show. Oh, good. yes. If you'd like a sopapilla for the road, James, we oh, have some extras the, there. You oh, can help yeah, yourself. I'll eat the one we've been using. That's the <laughs> one. That's the <laughs> um, all right, what here, I'll take. take these backstage oh, and enjoy. I shall, I shall take these. Oh. Sopapillas. Thank you, Sarah. We oh, out thank here. you, Charlie. Wonderful games. All right. That was... Quite a racket. Really, we should thank Quite the audience racket. for indulging us in our silly antics all summer long. All right. Well, another silly antic that we've been indulging in all summer long is with our friends from the Tattered Cover at the back of the room. Tattered Cover put together a series called Mixed Taste Reads. It's books inspired by the talks that we offered through Mixed Taste this summer, sometimes written by the very speakers that you saw here this summer. They've added books all, all, every week, all summer long. You can buy them at the back of the room. You can also buy them online at tatteredcover.com. And a portion of the proceeds benefits not only the M Museum of Contemporary Art Denver, but also the Denver Center for the Performing Arts. How do you like that? I um, know. So while we're still resetting for a minute, we just wanted to make a couple of quick shout outs. There have been a ton of people who work to make mixed taste possible this summer. Um, you get to see their names in the scrolling credits at the end of the night. We want to give a special shout out to Susie Q. Smith, who is our guest curator, who helped us put together this season that has been lots of fun and really excellent. Yes, so thank, thank you, you, Susie. And Cheyenne Michaels, who is at the MCA, she's our digital producer. She has been working behind the scenes to make it all flow seamlessly and smoothly. So a huge thanks to Cheyenne. Yes, Cheyenne. Um, and now, I would like to introduce our second speaker, who will be teaching us about social robots. 
Dr. Mohamed Mahor is a professor of electrical and computer engineering at DU. He does research in the area of computer vision and machine learning, including human-robot interaction, creating social robots for interaction inter and intervention with children with special needs and elderly people with depression and dementia. Please welcome Mohamed Mahor. Good evening, everyone. Hi. I'm really delighted and excited to be here tonight and uh, present this special guest, Ryan. But before I talk about Ryan, I want to take a few moments to tell you, you know, the story of Ryan and where this robot is coming from. All right, uh, so uh, I uh, work at DU and I do research on effective computing or artificial intelligence. Basically, we want to make the robots to be able to understand people's emotion and also to be able to empathize with them, to be able to tell jokes, right? I don't think you have ever, you know, heard a joke from a robot, but you will hear, you know, a joke uh, from a robot, you know, from Brian. So what is a social robot? So basically, social robot is a robot that can help people with uh, social and emotional, you know, well-being, other than physical uh, well-being, uh, physical actual activities. So these are examples of uh, uh, social robots that you see on the right and also general robots that are used in the factories, right? So uh, Ryan is an example of the social robot that we have been designing in my lab at DU and also at DreamFace Technologies. So there was a, an article uh, a few years ago that really describes, you know, social robotics uh, pretty nicely. And as you see here, social robots can provide companionship, that's, you know, in the case of Ryan, and can do behavioral therapy, can do monitoring, you know, for if elderly fall, and also can motivate people to exercise and do well. So uh, in our case, we have designed this robot, Ryan, to help people with dementia and depression. So uh, we have added features because uh, people with uh, dementia and depression, has a, they have a lot of needs, and uh, the features of Ryan can assist them, and especially nowadays, because of the shortage of caregivers and also workers, Ryan can, you know, fill the gap. So uh, I'm, I will explain, you know, the features of Ryan in a moment, but before that, I wanted to actually tell you the results of the some of the studies that we have done so far. So we have made a few of you know, these robots and we have deployed them in the field in different senior care facilities in Denver and we have uh, given uh, people actually Ryan. So they have had it as a roommate for, uh, for, a few, for several weeks and we collected data and we wanted to see that, you know, how they feel, whether they like it or not, right, whether they enjoy the conversation, the jokes and everything that, you know, Ryan can provide. And we learned that uh, people with dementia and social isolation, they like different features of Ryan, what we have put it on it, and they enjoy the interaction, and even sometimes they want to take it out, you know, for dinner or for a date, right? They ask silly questions. And also we uh, created a version of Ryan that cannot smile, doesn't have any feeling, it's a robot, robot, right? And compared it with the another version of Ryan that can understand people's emotion. And we look at their smiles, you know, we look at people's reaction, and the, the version of Ryan uh, with the smile and with empathy, you know, was definitely better, of course. And these are some of, you know, the user's comments. So I can read one of them. I had a good time, I enjoyed her very much. So back then we had the female version of Ryan, so that's why we call it Ryan, so Ryan is, you know, is a unisex name. And uh, you want her to be a real thing, like an addition to you know, uh, your home. And you know, many more comments that we have received from people. Here is a video of one of the real users that had used Ryan. And uh, let me play this video. Hello. How are you today? I'm uh, very good, thank you. What did they do with it? I, the salmon, it was, it was baked. And, uh, and then I had, with it, I had some uh, curried potatoes. Can you tell me about yourself, Ryan? My name is Ryan. I was built by Dream Base Technology to be a companion for seniors. It added a conversationalist that I that I have to go out and, and find. It's amazing. Uh, 
You know, when I was uh, when I was a kid, you know, like 70 years ago, uh, I was reading science fiction stories about about flying. So I mean, this is like being in a science fiction story. So this was the second generation of Lion. In the video, you see two generations, the first iteration and the second one. And now I'm going to demo the third generation. But uh, currently, we have made uh, seven units of Lion. We are doing research on this and see what is the effectiveness of using a social robot, a companion bot, to assist people with uh, dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So I wanted to take a moment to thank all my team members who have helped me to build this robot. This has been a project that we have been working on it for about uh, seven years. So uh, I want to uh, present it now. <laughs> okay. So of course, whenever we wanted to turn on Ryan, there's a card we tap here and then, you know, we log into Ryan. And let me take a moment. So uh, I am not quite sure what you said. So what should we talk about now? Hi, Ryan. Hey there. I have been looking forward to chatting. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Hey there. I have been looking forward to chatting. How are you doing today? <laughs> topics? Some of my favorite topics are television, movies, music, sports, books, science, food, history, and museums. Football. Football fans are most fun. Do you agree? Yes, I agree with you. Nothing gets the blood pumping like tailgating or cheering from the stands. <laughs> what is your favorite professional football team? Uh, repeat? I didn't hear. Nothing gets the blood pumping like tailgating or cheering from the stands. What is your favorite professional football team? The Broncos, of course. The Broncos, who are they only kidding? Do you think it is a good time to be a Broncos fan? <laughs> Maybe, yes. I cannot argue with you on that. What are you expecting for this season? Uh, hopefully an easy start. I agree, start. hopefully. It is a good one. <laughs> Do you want to keep talking about football? An easy start? I am not quite sure what you said. Would you like to get back to talking about football? Yes. <laughs> yes? Can you hear me? Do you want to keep talking about football? Yes, of course. I am curious. Did you ever play football? Not really, but I enjoy watching uh, football. Sometimes I think it is better to cheer on from the comfortable confines of the couch. Do you agree? I do agree, yes. So we Heck can... yes. What are your Super Bowl traditions? Uh, I cook a lot of food and enjoy the game with my friend and family. I love talking about family. Does your family visit you often? Yes. Okay, so <laughs> it's going to talk about, you know, family now and other things. But I want to show you the other features of Ryan, if you don't mind. So... Uh, we have designed, actually, Ryan, to have a calendar so we can add events, and that is going to help people with dementia to remind them to take their pills. People can... Uh, I love talking about family. Does your family visit oh, you often? <laughs> he's going to keep talking and talking and asking. Actually, we can listen to music, so that's another thing that Ryan can do. You know, music therapy is really important for people with dementia. Uh, we can play different games, either against Ryan or uh, co-played with Ryan. So we have added, you know, several games to Ryan, such as solitaire, chess, uh, checkers, and uh, word puzzles, flow puzzles, and so on and so forth. So uh, even we have some simple video games using this camera, actually. Uh, Ryan can track human bodies and then, uh, you know, do video games. Through this camera, Ryan can do facial expression recognition. That's one of the important features of Ryan that we have. Also, Ryan can recognize uh, emotion through uh, sentiment analysis or doing a speech recognition. So that's another feature of Ryan. And of course, we can add the family photos and Ryan can narrate, you know, and tell you stories about those uh, 
those photos. Ryan, uh, Ryan Arms are also active, and if I ask Ryan to maybe do exercise, it will do so. Can you exercise? <laughs> okay, don't hit me. <laughs> hey there, I have been looking forward to chatting. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. Tell me a joke. Great to hear, seeing you and talking to you is the highlight of my day. What do you say we talk about movies? Tell me a stop. Unfortunately, I did not quite hear what you said. So what do you think you would like to talk about now? Tell me a joke. I cannot believe I got fired from the calendar factory. All I did was take a day off. Hope you liked that one. <laughs> Tell me another joke. I will be here all night. Now, want to hear a funny story? Yes. It is so great chatting with you, but unfortunately I do not have a response for that. So what do you think you would like to talk about now? Uh, show me a video. Can I play you a trailer for a film nominated for Best Picture in 2020? Yes. That would be awesome. I hear you. Show me a video. <laughs> so, this is an old you know, video clip that we actually on Ryan. So. Here is a video I think you will really like. This is from the movie It Is A Wonderful Life. What do you think of that scene? It is one of my favorites. Okay, sounds great. Thank you, Ryan. You must be a fan of Jimmy Stewart as well. He is a real character. <laughs> Are so you we still can... enjoying this conversation about movies? Yes, I know that, yeah. Excellent. Would you like to see a scene from another holiday movie that I like? Maybe, yes. <laughs> Before we begin, since this is Aunt Bethany's 80th Christmas, I'm going to stop it, okay, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Do you remember that scene? Ryan, how do you feel about puppies? You see that? He loves puppies. <laughs> Can you hail a taxi? Who could forget? What is your favorite holiday? Uh, hail a taxi for me. Hey there, I have been looking forward to chatting. How are you doing today? Stop. Is that so? Well, I love talking with you. It really brightened my day. Would you like to talk about American history? Uh, that's enough for tonight. Thank you, Ryan. Have a good evening. Would you like to talk about President Invention, the voyage of the country, right. or the history of war? Uh, all right, anyway, thank you so much. Appreciate it, yes. I want to mute it. Thank you, Mohammed. <laughs> and you, Ryan, Ryan will be joining us for the Q&A as well. So if you have questions for Ryan, you can type them in. Yes. Uh, well, here's the QR code again for those who want to participate in the Q&A on your second device. You know, please submit your questions. And if you want to be eligible to win tonight's prize for the best connection, include your name on that, and we will uh, read it out. Uh, so we're going to bring back our speakers. And we will take questions on both topics at the same time. We encourage you to draw connections between Casa Bonita and social robots if you can. And of course, we will celebrate that, those connections with the gong. So, um, and a, as you probably know, we give a very special prize to the question that makes the best connection. Again, put your name in if you want to be eligible. So let's get started. All right, 
so we are just getting into the questions here on our phones. Welcome to, back to is you both. The, is that the ping pong gong? This is the, the ping pong gong. Famous. Should we give it a test? Yeah. Okay, it's still working. <laughs> ping pong did not damage the gong, <laughs> as it turns out. All right. Here's our Q&A cab. I was so enchanted by Ryan, I left my phone backstage. But, but now, here we are. All right. Um, so Westman asks, would a social robot be able to tell us when the food at Casa Bonita was actually good? <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad, what can Ryan tell us about social, Casa Bonita? The question let's, everyone wants to know. If you don't mind, I can ask Ryan and see, let's see what Ryan says, okay? Uh, Google okay. Casa Bonita. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Okay then, what would you like to talk about? Google Casa Bonita. He's staring at you so intensely, John. No. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's very in intense, this glare. We're like. <laughs> Do you want to try uh, that one more time? Yeah, one more time. Google Casa Bonita. <laughs> I think it's not hearing what I'm Simple saying. Here. Okay, can I try it once? Yes, please. And yes. let's get everyone to be super silent. I'll talk right into Ryan's mic. Google Casa Bonita. Is the microphone on? Uh, the microphone is on. Oh, Ryan's asleep. We'll try yeah, it one okay. last time. Google Casa Bonita. Now did you go? Google Casa Bonita. Oh, don't embarrass me! Oh. <laughs> That's the worried eyebrows. Oh, is he listening now? Yeah, he should be listening when the light is green. Google Casa Bonita. We rehearsed this several no. times. Okay, I'll try it again. Smiling. I bet you can answer that we'll, question. We'll give Ryan a break. Yeah. And then we'll try good question. It, it is a good question. Oh, gosh, okay. My phone locked. All right. I, uh, Dillinger wants to know, if I have a friend that wants to go to Casa Bonita and actually eat, can a, robo a social robot help talk them off the cliff? This is, this is another <laughs> one, of, uh, one of Andrew's haters talking smack about the food at Casa Bonita. Don't, don't talk anyone off a cliff, first of all. Only licensed uh, people, employees can jump off the cliff. They make that very clear when you go, do not jump off the cliff. Um, it would be fun to go to Cosmonita with Ryan, though. I think we, we yeah. would have a great time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Ryan could tell you all about history there. <laughs> and Ryan can be a greeter, right? Or yes, exactly. Yeah, we, yeah, he might get hired. He likes to talk about food. Um, that is the next question from Chinita. With our current labor shortage, when do you think social robots will start to serve food and play music at Casa Bonita or Casa Robita? Robita. <laughs> <laughs> could, could this technology be used for, you know, to replace people in certain contexts? Or? So we don't want to replace people and workers and caregivers, but we wanted to assist them. We wanted to supplement, you know, the needs and to fill the gaps, basically. By no means we intend to uh, take jobs you know, from people. And Andrew, what, um, what jobs at Casa Bonita would best be achieved by a robot? <laughs> um, maybe the uh, yeah, kitchen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, I would say definitely um, seating you because they take, they come and they, they, one of them picks up your tray, someone who works there picks up one of the person's trays uh -huh. and they take you to your seat. So that would be really fun if that was a, a robot. Maybe a robot gorilla, even. Oh, they so could probably so seat you more efficiently than a human could. That's, that's no, very that's true. true. I, I would like to be seated by a robot, I, not just at Casa Bonita, at any restaurant. Um, so that'd be nice. Yeah, All right, sure. Sarah, not me, but another Sarah, would like to know, <laughs> does gender change the emotional data responses to Ryan, and does gender change the amount of Sopapilla flag raising at Casa Bonita? <laughs> But uh, definitely the gender can change, right? The face of the robot can change, the voice can change, yeah. And does yeah. uh, the gender of the person who's speaking to Ryan change Ryan's responsive responses? 
Uh, that's the next generation of Ryan, definitely. To have different four. personalities, you know, oh. female, male, you know, personality. But the appearance, definitely, I can give a quick demo of the appearance of Ryan, different faces, you know, here. I don't know if you can see that, but is it, can you see it on the screen? Yeah, that's go. another one. Yep. So you're changing what the appearance, the skin color? The skin color and, you know, wrinkles features. and the textures and the features, yes. And Andrew, what about the Sopapia part of the question? Uh, as far as the flag raising, I would say whoever's hungriest, so that's like a gender neutral experience, you know. <laughs> Anyone who wants more Sopapias? Um, this is an anonymous question. How about using Kenny's voice from South Park for the robot? <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess is, a, is actually a serious question about what, how, do you, how do you approach the voice? Can that be changed? How is the voice a factor in the technology? It is a big factor. So for the voice of Ryan, actually, we hired an actor, a voice actor. We recorded his voice, and we used artificial intelligence, basically, to come up with, you know, with the voice synthesizer. Yeah, there's that real human you know, being's voice, the one that you're hearing. I think that's a huge factor. It has to be suiting, right, especially for a social robot, a caring robot like Ryan. Well, they totally could make Kenny's voice. In there, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be funny, for sure. All right, Josh Miller wants to know, how easily could social robotics be integrated to help with participation from autistic children in some of the play areas throughout Casa Bonita, but I think that question could also be generalized more broadly. This is a social robot that's yeah. designed to help elderly people. How can robots help other segments of the population? Absolutely, that's a very good question. So in fact, my research started with children with autism using social robot to assist them because uh, you know most kids, and especially kids with special needs, they can connect and communicate better with technology and with robots right, than strangers eventually. So we, have, we are actively doing research on this topic. And it's, it's, I think in the future, very soon, we will, you will see robots, social robots, in the, you know, helping doctors and therapists to assist children with autism, to improve their social skills, you know, to teach them to uh, do things. Right? That's cool. Um, this is a related question from Brian. Was the interactive video genie at the bottom of the Casa Bonita wishing well a prototypical example of a social robot for awkward, <laughs> lonely kids? <laughs> I, re I remember going as a kid, we always wanted to look in the well, but it was like a green faced, scary thing. So we wanted to see it just so that we could be like, oh no, it's scary. But um, another one of the things for my 300th um, party is I actually recorded a video of me stuck in the well, mm -hmm. and I figured out how, like nobody at Cosmodina knows how that thing works. I had to like figure out how it works, insert my video in there. So at my thing, I'm like, hey, I'm stuck in the well. <laughs> Get me out of here or throw down soap of pias. <laughs> I have so many questions about your 300th visit to Cosmodina. <laughs> It was well documented. I I, I'm sure it was. I, I, feel like, I feel like the staff was like, oh, I guess he's here again. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. They probably miss you. So, uh, Sean W. asks, as a potential new owner of Casa Benita, would you start including a social robot gorilla to start diving during the shows? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Can Ryan swim? If you can give him a swimsuit, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, a, like a Ziploc a bag Ziploc or something. Ziploc right? yeah, and also run the power cable or add a battery. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, as long as no one gets electrocuted, I think that's an awesome idea. <laughs> Especially Ryan. <laughs> um, I think we should give Ryan another shot to see if Ryan can talk to us well, about Casa Bonita. See, I hope. Uh, I mean, that's the connection that I've been waiting for all night. Yeah. About. Hello, Ryan. What about soap yes. I'm waiting for the green light. Oh, it's back. Hi, Ryan. Can you hear me? Could be internet connection. <laughs> oh, I use the mic. 
you need to talk into the mic more? Yeah, it'd be... Let's see. Some people get stage fright. Hi, Ryan. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? I totally What's feel going like on? that Don't forget my phone. <laughs> Sad social robot. Yeah. Um, here's a question from Ian while we... Oh, do you yeah. want to try? Huh? Hello? I have no clue what's going on. I it's, mean... It's stage fright, it must be. Yeah. yeah. Robots are unpredictable. A lot like people. All right, well... Uh, well. You, can, you can tell your robot joke, Charlie. Um, right, why can't robots tell jokes timing? Um, so... Uh, <laughs> This is a, a question for Andrew from Ian. Ryan appears to love Christmas. How does Casa Bonita celebrate the holidays? Oh, wow. Good Christmas is, uh, is an incredible time. Like Halloween and Christmas, they, they go all out. Uh, they, the whole place is decorated with lights. Um, uh, they have had, they, they never really changed the menu, hardly ever. But a couple years ago, they did have uh, cinnamon spice um, sopapillas. And they had a Christmas drink. I can't remember what it was, but like a warm drink. But uh, yeah, it's a very cool. Just when I think that I, I'm so used to Cosmina, nothing amazes me. When I go like in November when they do the Christmas thing, I'm just like, oh yeah, this is amazing. So it's incredible. Miss that. All right, this is uh, this is gonna be our last question tonight. This is from Sarah K W. Both Casa Bonita and social robots are immersive experiences. Do you feel like this is the future of social interaction? Is true human interaction passe? Nice question. That was a nice question. Nice question to go out on tonight. I think so. What do you think? Uh, I, I mean, for me, it's actually interesting because of, because of all the screens and devices that we're all talking to. I find that some of the experiential things that I've done, like a scavenger hunt type thing or... Uh, something where you're actually going into uh, kind of a, a raw situation or like sending somebody something in the mail is actually welcomed because everyone's just looking at screens all the time. So if you're always using the screen to actually talk to somebody, you know, uh, a live person or experience a thing outside uh, has definitely, I think, has increased. The interest in that has increased as we're depending on technology. Mm -hmm. And I have seen increased interest in social robots, and I, I think this is the future, no matter what. You know, either we want it or we don't want it, or we are not willing to, you know, invite Ryan or have Ryan. But Ryan will come to our, you know, homes very soon. <laughs> this is what I think. <laughs> I have one relatable thing to mention. It wasn't a question, but um, as far as like. Fixing mm -hmm. robots and things. There's a book that somebody did, an ex-employee of Cosmonita called Forks Fix Everything. Okay. <laughs> and it just it talks about how like whatever happened, they would like pry things open with a fork, or they would have to like hit something with a fork to get it to work. So uh, have you ever tried to fix Ryan with a fork? <laughs> That's a good <laughs> I should ask my engineer to see that if see, they see can. Before we get there, yeah. see what happens. I'm just curious. <laughs> Maybe that's what we're missing right now. Yeah, yes, well, I could thinking, be. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both, Mohammed, thank Andrew. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you guys. Great yeah. questions, audience. And now it's prize time. Prize time. All right, every week we give a prize to the person who makes the best connections between the topics. Our prizes are chosen by Cheyenne Michaels. Cheyenne is MCA Denver's digital producer, and she has chosen her favorite question of the night, and the person who submitted it is going to receive this fabulous prize. It is a MCA Denver membership and a, a tote as well, I am told. So that is a fabulous prize. Charlie, who won the prize for the best connection tonight. The winner of the, the best connection tonight was our last question from Sarah KW, who asked about immersive experiences. Congratulations. Congratulations. Sarah, are you here in the, hot, in the audience? Do I see you, Sarah? Great, find us after the show and we'll get you your prize. Congratulations, thank you.
that is fabulous. And now let's invite James back to enlighten us with an original poem inspired by tonight's talks on social robots and Casa Bonita. James Brunt is a Denver-based actor. He's a teaching artist and a poet. Please welcome James. <laughs> Hello, hello. This is wild. This was a wild night. Wild night. Ping pong with trees and, and Casa Bonita and, and robots and everybody in the same room. This is crazy. All right. This is wild. All right. So I wrote this just, just now, listening to everybody talk. Yes, I was listening. I was listening in the back. Okay. So um, it goes like this. It goes like this. This just in, the air in Denver looks like an apocalypse and we are searching for an all blue sky yet again. Breaking news, Casa Bonita is now being run by social robots that are dressed in garments from the 1970s. <laughs> people are screaming so loud that the excitement has raised on and people, especially in the children, children rave while jumping up and down drunk off of fun and bellies full of sopapillas that this place right here this place right here is better than Disneyland. <laughs> Don't tell Mickey. While the robots of the next generation are not only star staring at you with cold eyes, they are actually getting deep. So deep that if you are alone, they may have conversations with you, talking to you about sports and your favorite classic movies. Making your heart beat so fast, it almost feels like you are in a room full of your family. Fear not. If your life is dry, Ryan will play your favorite Will Smith hits, getting jiggy with it. <laughs> to quietly remind you, this is not iRobot. I repeat, this is not iRobot. Uh, maybe iRobot? Oh no, um, it's the Terminator. <laughs> uh, uh, Skynet in your phone, shaking your brain, yo, your dome. But, but guess what, in the back of the dark, Chiquita is waiting for you to come to Casa Bonita. <laughs> To watch the water flow and the margaritas get the adults screaming, big old eyes got them gleaming. Talking to Ryan don't seem so bad because when you talk with the pen and paper, it ain't so bad because at least you have a voice to hear. At least you got somebody to listen. So I guess uh, talking to yourself, it's uh, pretty great, pretty great of a listen, I think. This is the change, the next thing that's going to go to my membrane, because you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Th things are getting insane. They are trying to ease your brain. I said, there's robots talking, people playing with ping pong. I said, oh my goodness, I might do a dance and a sing song. <laughs> I said, I'm losing it. Things are getting crazy. People hold on to their phones and go through scrolling, 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 scrolling. Is that my dead cat? Oh my goodness, too bad. Oh, don't. <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> Don't do it. But you are also connected to technology. Oh, it just be putting you through it. It just be putting you through it. But that's okay. It's all right. You have robots, technology, sopapillas at midnight. <laughs> Gotta have the sopapillas at midnight. So good, so delicious. But you must remember one thing and one thing only. Hold on to your heart. Hold on to the thing that beats in the middle of the night in the dark, because that's all you got. The things that you care about, the people next to you, that's all you got. So hold on to it. Never forget. And also remember, save Castle Bonita. <laughs> Brent, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, Jim. And thank you to our presenting sponsor, Blue Room. Blue Room is a private investment company born of invention, forward thought, and hope. Through best-in-class investing, they create space to amplify, amplify the power of human togetherism. Togetherism means together we can accomplish anything. Thank you so much to our speakers again, Mohammed and Andrew. Thanks to you, our audience for joining us this summer. Um, on your second screen, there's a little survey. If you can fill it out, that would help us. You'll also get a survey on the emails. That helps us inform our future choices and our programming with mixed tastes. 
Thank, thank you, Sarah. It's thank been you, a great Charlie. summer. This was a fantastic summer. Thank you, audience. And that's it. This is the summer. We'll see you next year. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Sure.